Right, we're now going to look at positioning. Now this can be a little bit tricky and can get a little bit complicated, but it's extremely powerful and enables you to um, create some really quite complicated layouts with your CSS. So let's see how this looks. First of all, I'm going to get rid of my floating. Um, we're going to make things a little bit simpler so we can see clearer what's going on with our divs. Um, so let's get rid of this float there and we don't need the clear anymore either. So we'll get rid of that just to tidy everything up a little bit. So save that, refresh. Oops. Let's get rid of that float as well. Okay, so everything is now as it was before the previous video. We've got our, our two divs, our purple div and our green div and um, our paragraph at the bottom there. So what if you wanted to um, align this div slightly differently? So at the moment it's just sitting there. It might be that I want to move it slightly to the right and slightly down. How would I do that? Well, what we would do, we go to our purple box um, class details there and we change the position nature of this div to relative. So that means that um, I can move this position around relative, sorry, move this div around relative to where it would otherwise be, i.e. here. So let's say I want to move it 100 pixels to the right. Now slightly confusingly, we give it, um, if we want to move it to the right, we give it an instruction of left. Um, that is because what we're really doing here is setting a left margin of 100 pixels. So we're adding a margin to the left of this purple div here, which makes it effectively move to the right. Let's see what that does. Okay, we've now moved our purple div a little bit to the right. Fantastic, simple enough. Similarly, we can move it downwards if we want by giving it a top margin, let's say of 200 pixels. We've now shifted it down. Notice it's actually gone on top of this other element, or the two other elements there, the green div and the p tag. So that will happen. When you move things around in this way, then it will move on top of other elements like um, like the green div tag there. We'll, I'll show you a way of moving it around without doing this in the next video. But with positioning, when you move things position-wise, they're on top of each other. Now that begs the question, how does the browser decide which one goes on top? Well at the moment the purple div goes on top simply because it comes first in the flow. So this purple box div comes before the green box div. But what if you wanted the, the green one to be on top? Well, what you do is you give them both what's known as a Z index value. Now, the Z index value um, essentially is a layering tool. It allows you to put one div on top of another, or indeed any element on top of another. And essentially, when you've got two elements which both have a Z index value, the one with the larger Z index value is going to go on top. So let's give this one a Z index of 1, and we'll give the green box a Z index of 2. And let's see what happens. Nothing. Interesting. Now, the reason that this um, has not actually done anything is because we haven't given the green box div a position. And Z indexing for it to work, uh, the each element that's involved has to have a position. So all we do is give the green box div a relative position. Notice that's not going to move it at all unless I specify some left or top um, instructions. And now, there we go, the green box is on top of the purple box. So remember, when you're giving Z index values to certain divs, you, they must have a position type specified. Um, if they're not um, given a position type, then they the, the Z indexing won't make any difference. Okay, so that's how you decide um, what item goes on top of any other item when you've got some overlap. Um, what if you wanted to move the purple box to the left? So let's just get get rid of left and top. 
for a minute and remind ourselves that's what it looked like back originally. So what if I wanted to move this up a little bit, for example? Well, what you do is you specify a negative margin on the top. So maybe I want a negative margin of 50 pixels. That's likely to take it above the top of the page, but that's fine. So we'll save that. There we go, so that shifts it up. Similarly, if we want to shift it left, then we give it a negative left margin. We can give it a negative margin of 100 pixels, and that'll move it to the left. So it's now gone um, almost completely off the page. Okay, so that's how we move things around relative to they were to where they were originally. But there are a couple of other ways that you can move stuff around. Um, so there are a couple of other position attributes that are worth looking at at this stage. So the first one I'll show you is the position absolute. Yeah, and we'll do it with the green type there. So position relative move things moves things around relative to where they would otherwise be. Position absolute is slightly different. Let's have a look and see what that does. So let's get rid of our position relatives and create a position absolute and see exactly what that does. Okay. Now what on earth has happened there? What's happened is that this purple box is still positioned um, where it was before, at the towards the top left of the page, um, but it's now been taken out of the flow of the page. So essentially, this green div here and the paragraph underneath are ignoring the presence of this um, purple div. So it's there, but it's not affecting the layout of any other elements on the page. And that's how something with an um, absolute position actually works. Now the subtleties of that um, are a little bit complicated. I'm not going to go into them in great detail here. We'll look at them later on. Um, but essentially, if you want to use a um, absolute position, then the effect that you will get is that everything else on the page will ignore that position attribute. Now there are a couple more that are worth just looking at very briefly. And one of them is fixed. So if we save that, now if we refresh that, it looks exactly the same. So fixed positioning is very similar to absolute positioning in the sense that um, everything else on the page will ignore the presence of that fixed div. But let's add in a few, few more green boxes. and give the green boxes a greater height. So let's call it 500 pixels. Um, and I've done that just so that we've got lots of um, content on the page so I can scroll down. Now when we start to scroll, you see what happens there. So a fixed div is actually fixed relative to the browser window. So quite common in web design at the moment is to have a fixed header bar at the top. You've probably seen this on several websites so that when you scroll down, the header bar is still there giving you access to the menu and various other options. Um, and so that's a very common use of fixed positioning. But that's that's how it works. So with fixed positioning, just with absolute positioning, you can still use the left and top um, instructions. So let's move it to the right and down a little bit. Yep. But the important thing is when you scroll up and down, the thing that you've given the fixed positioning to is not going to scroll. It will be fixed relative to the browser window. Now, just to finish off, you might be wondering what type of positioning boxes and divs and paragraph tags are given if you don't actually specify a position at all. Well, the answer is simply a static position. So if I set the position to static, then we scroll back up, then we get back to where we started. So if you don't give a position um, instruction to any um, div on your page, then they'll just be static by default. And if you want to set them to the default, then you can just use position static to do that. Now, as I said, this is a reasonably complex topic. If you want to look into it a bit more, particularly the absolute positioning, then um, have a look at w3schools.com um, CSS positioning. I will link to that in the docs, um, but it's a really nice little article and has lots of opportunities for you to try this out for yourself as well.